Good day. This is Sofia Fotina. As a mother, a grandmother, and um, Montessori method, kindergarten teacher, and cafe call method, uh, kindergarten teacher, um, I had many opportunities to be close to children and to learn, learn from them and later as a yoga teacher um, specialized on children and parents with children yoga. Um, so I learned so many things I would like to share with you. Uh, one of my observations uh, as they were um, very young um, I, I saw that um, the way they surrendered on their parents' lap, on their parents' hands, uh, was something that uh, really, really impressed me. How much they were uh, surrendering so that, I mean, they they gave the impression nothing wrong will happen, nothing bad is going to happen, we are okay. Um, when they started sitting, about six, seven months old, their back was so straight and I noticed their belly um, going out when they inhaled going back in when they exhaled exactly what we uh, describe as a diaphragmatic breathing um, as they were growing uh, little by little they uh, started sitting in a different way breathing in a different way because their body started um, their, their back started to uh, be uh, bent so their breath started to be very shallow uh, and very short uh, just coming from the upper side of, the, of their lungs at the same time when they were young I could hear children laughing and they were so happy playing um, being amused um, and as they were growing and as their body was changing and as their breath was changing they started laughing less and I wondered where did this laughter uh, start uh, becoming less and less and almost disappeared. What happened? So, um, what I understood was that as they were growing up, they um, took their parents' fears, uh, they either, either they imitated or they uh, made it a part of their personality and uh, so being afraid uh, is something that makes us shrink uh, but when we are full of love as a child comes in our world it, the only reason that we come in this world is because of love nothing else uh, because of the love of the universal love because of the love of our parents but it's only because of love that we come in this world and so when we start being afraid this love um, does not uh, manifest itself so much but we on the contrary we see a fear augmenting and as the fear grows the body shrinks mm -hmm. and then we have to teach our children again to sit straight uh, but 
I also saw many other beautiful things that the children brought with them except for this surrendering and this love they brought uh, so that they made everybody uh, everybody loves a child isn't that true uh, because it's a personification of love itself um, the children the younger they were the more they for they forgive the uh, for example, when we scold them sometimes, you can see their tears are still running in their face, but they come and hug us. Mm, they have already forgiven, and they don't call it forgiveness, but you feel it. Eh? You know they have forgiven us for whatever make, made them cry or hurt. Um, there are so many, there are so many these qualities. They are patient, incredibly patient. They are truthful. They like to say the truth. They, they don't know how to be in a different way. <laughs> Something that makes me laugh whenever I remember it. A child was asked by his mother uh, because she w didn't want to be disturbed. And she said, whoever calls, please say I'm not here. <laughs> the phone rang. The child said, uh, Mom asked me to tell you um, she's, uh, she's not here. <laughs> That's what she said. So I th they don't know how to, to say a lie. They meditate so naturally. They get absorbed to something. And if you look at their eyes and their face, they seem to be in another world. They seem to be uh, so very much in what they are looking at. It's as if it they are absorbed or the, the they have absorbed whatever they are looking. And even if you talk to them, they don't listen. They don't listen to you. Um, they live in the present time. They don't live in the past or the future. They live in the here and now. Then, so here means that they are exactly here. They are not in another place. They don't think of another place. And they don't mind if they go with their parents. They don't mind in which place they are. Hmm? They are here and they are now always now. Uh, they believe in what we grown-ups call miracles. For example, they believe that in nature there are uh, fairies. But they believe it because they, they perceive it. Hmm? Uh, it's not a, f a story that they believe in. Hmm? It, they, they they have a feeling of that. And mm, uh, when, when they hit, the, for example, their finger, and mommy puts some saliva on, on that, uh, and they believe that the saliva of their mother can heal them. But this is true. It is not, it is not a fairy tale. It is not a miracle that a mother make us uh, take the pain away from us. It's not a miracle. It is the truth. But it is because they perceive this very um, slight truth, very, very, um, li very light truth. Um, They are natural creators. Hmm? Whatever they have in their hands, they make something. And they don't care what they are doing. But they are doing. They don't stop doing. Uh, they like to make, you know, uh, uh, mud. And, and make, mm, when they play with sand in the sea, near the sea, mm, uh, they like to, 
uh, play with Lego. Lego is a very beautiful, very um, creative game uh, play. Uh, they they build uh, things. They like to dance. They like to sing. They like to paint. They like all the arts, you know. And uh, um, mm, they are never tired. Never tired because they love what they do. All these are spiritual qualities they have. Um, as I said before, <coughs> they are in here and now, so they have no idea about time. We have to teach them, right? When they are a little bit older, we have to teach them what time it is. Uh, they have no perception of the space they are and they have no um, know nothing about uh, the causation huh? uh, for example that when we push a glass of water when we push it at the end edge of the table it will fall and maybe it will break also huh? and but as they grow they enter these three things are the um, the characteristics of the material world this is how the material world works eh? and also it works in opposites and the child has no idea about opposites for the child everything is one so when the children the young ones when they look at their mom and dad over their bed they don't know that they are looking at uh, mom and a uh, dad especially it is a mommy daddy thing they're looking at and if there is a furniture behind if there is a, a library or something uh, the book uh, shelf uh, they look at the bookshelf mommy eh? so what many years ago people thought that children cannot see it is not true they see very well but they don't know what they are looking at. Hmm? They are what they see. They believe it is one thing because they come from a world that everything was one. Nothing was separated. Um, some more of their beautiful spiritual uh, qualities they have. They do not discriminate. For example. Uh, when they see a white person, um, yellow, let's call it, person, or a black or brown colored person, they do not, they do not discriminate, they don't feel differently for them, but they understand the difference. <laughs> for example, the first time a little one, three years old, two two and a half three years old uh, when this this child saw a black man approaching uh, she said to her mom oh mom night oh the the the, the young man that was approaching was uh, so such an open person and he said to her hello day <laughs> so I mean, they understand, they see the difference, but they don't discriminate. They don't say they are different, they are good, they are bad, they are worse, they are better, nothing. Eh? So these are things of our civilization, which most of the times create problems. Um, other, uh, more, more of the spiritual um, qualities. Uh, if we tell them a compliment, they accept it so naturally. Huh? They are not, the, their ego has not yet grown. Huh? Um, so uh, if we tell them, oh, you are, uh, you are so beautiful, or oh, what a beautiful dress you are wearing, they say, I know. That's all, you know, and they go on. They also accept death so easily, so naturally. There was once uh, a little one, a five-year-old. Her grandmother had died. 
and uh, she asked her grandfather, where is your mother? And the grandfather said, oh, it's a long time now, she has died. And the child's mother who heard that, she was terrified, she said, oh my God, how did my father talk like that to my child? But then he saw, she saw her daughter accepting what her grandfather said and she said, ah, okay, and she went, continued playing with her, whatever she was doing. So children accept things very, very simply, in a very simple way. And the last thing I would like to tell you is, our children are great teachers because the way they teach is like the great, great teachers of uh, any tradition uh, that they teach without um, intending, they don't have any intention for a result. They teach, they tell you some things because they have to tell out of love, but they don't expect anything. They don't expect you to do what they say. They have no intention to teach you. So this is a great characteristic of our children. Thank you very much.